Hey everybody, Phil Garner here with Garner's Garden. So people ask me, are you in stores? Are you on Amazon? Are you da da da? People think the pinnacle of owning a skincare company like mine is to be in stores. Well, mm, you may want to you may want to check some stats because the richest man in the world owns a website. And based off of what is required to get in these stores is almost like selling your, you know what, selling yourself to these people just so that you can get some products. I'd rather go the hard route and have a, and have a company that's 100% solely built on my hard work and effort, as in I know my customers, I know the names who come in with those customers, I know the people. If I didn't, if I didn't have that type of connection with my customers, then I would just be another nameless, faceless uh, type of business that is trying to sell you X, Y, and Z. It is not worth it. Well, for me, it wasn't worth it. I tried. I set up meetings. I did, um, there was a company called Range Me. I, I tried them. They set, they set up 50 meetings with Rite Aid, this, that, Walgreens. This, this. We went out there. We did presentations. We showed them our whole catalog. I built a catalog. I had great things. And they all said no. Okay. And what I realized was, is that I'm asking them to carry products in their stores that have pharmacies that, that sell drugs on, you know, over the counter drugs also that treat all the different ailments that I can solve that the products that God led me to create that can help with these things naturally versus going to the pharmacy. Versus believing in the believing in that versus natural things that have been put here on this earth by God. So and then also I realized that I want I don't want to have to uh, change my formulas. Once you get into these stores and you're shipping them from here to there to there to there and they're just sitting on shelves because when you go to these stores all you see is about eight of them there. You just see eight deodorants, maybe ten deodorants, and all the rest are in a stock stockpile somewhere. So natural things can't be stockpiled like that. So in order for me to keep the, in order for me to follow the mission that was given to me by God, which was to heal the world, then I can't put any type of emulsifiers in it. I can't put any type of, um, I mean, I can, but I don't want to. I don't want, I just want it to be 100% natural and 100% clean because I haven't been able to find any product in any store that is 100% naturally clean because it's impossible. That is the reason why they told me no. And then at that time, I had to make a decision. Am I going to doctor it up how they want me to doctor up? Am I going to lower my wholesale price all the way down to where I'm not even making money? Or am I going to try and do this online and, and develop my own community of people? Okay. So I chose to go that way to do this on my own. And so when people ask me, are you in stores? Are you in this? No. So does that devalue my brand? People are like, oh, you're just one of those. Okay. What do you, what do you sell? Shea butter? Yeah, I sell some shea. But <laughs> you don't understand. My company is actually, I got labels. I got all this other stuff. It's, it's actually quite a cool company. We, we, we have about, you know, 10,000 customers a month, 8,000 customers here and there, 4,000, whatever. It goes up and down, whatever. So... Um, the point is, is that you have to evaluate what you want, what your mission is, and what you want to get out of it. I have some friends who own businesses, and they started, well, let's just start with the ones that went straight to retail. Congratulations. Wow. You're in retail. You're in this store. You're in this store. You're in this store. Wow. But then that doesn't last, and things go on clearance because they're not moving. And now when they go on clearance, you owe, you owe that business, you owe that brick and mortar, whoever that retailer was, you owe them a check now. Because if you had to put it on 25% off, then 50% off, then 75% off, that difference, you're writing them a check. It's not a game. And then, um, and then all of the different pricing structures. I have friends who are in whole in um, not wholesale. I have friends who are wholesaling to these uh, brick and mortar retails, 
and the price that they have to bring their price all the way down to, they're not making enough money to sustain themselves as a company. Okay. But I thought, I thought, I thought it's all about, okay, you're not making as much per, but at least you're getting out to tens of thousands of people. Well, guess what? Now you have to do. Now they're going to ask you, how much is your budget to advertise to get people into, let's just say target to get people into target. What is your budget to get people into my store? Uh, 10,000. That's not enough. You're going to need to at least spend 50 to a hundred thousand dollars a year to get people into your store. So instead of, so that money that you're using to advertise all of those flyers you put up on, on Instagram, on your social media, all those advertising that you do, you could have been sending them to your Shopify store or to whatever store your online store and having the customers come directly to you. But instead you're using the same amount of effort to tell people to go shop over there where I have to give up 70% of my income in order for you to go shop there. And they're the middleman because for whatever reason, I'm not telling you to come to my website and buy from me directly where I can keep 100% minus 3% transaction fee, whatever that is. Well, you know, 90, 95% of that income. So I rather, I'd rather build it slowly and then it's going to take off like that because then word of mouth is going to occur than to have to dump a whole money into uh, developing and following their rules and doing what they tell me to do, changing my 100% natural ingredients because they don't want that in those products. They want it to be stabilized. They want shelf life. They want all this stuff to where it's no longer 100% completely natural because guess what? They have that pharmacy in the back that they still need to sell these people medicine when they get sick and deadly because they are putting all that crap into their body and then people are also putting all that crap onto their skin that they are selling too. And they want your products to become crap also. Okay. We got to keep this pharmaceutical section going. We can't have good stuff like this in it. And they told us, no, I had everything. I had the packaging. I had the barcodes. I had the warnings. I had this, I had that. I, da, 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 da. I let them try it. They're like, Whoa, this is a great product. Nah, we're good. All right, cool. So you just, you just helped me create a business that will last for generations now that I'm not dependent on anybody else other than my customer base that I can communicate with directly. I can't communicate to my Amazon. I can't communicate to my TikTok customers. I can't communicate to my target customers or to my Walmart customers or to my whoever customers. I can't sustain that over generations unless I get lucky like a company like Shea Moisture or like somebody else. I don't know the other companies that, you know, you look at their ingredients and now they're kind of questionable. So yes, you have those onesies and twosies that make it and those people, they sell and then, you know, and then their company is now, um, are the same people who have been giving people as bestos, Johnson and Johnson, Procter and Gamble and all those other stuff. They're the same people who own these companies now. So slowly but surely, the efficacy of that product is going to keep going down like that. Maybe, maybe not. Who cares? I don't, I don't care. All I'm telling you is the reason why I didn't go retail because I have to communicate with my customers. I wanted to build a generational uh, type company that if my son or if my daughter or if a cousin or somebody wants to take it over, then they can take it over. You build your money machine based on what you want it to be. What do you want to accomplish in the long run? Do you want to play these cat and mouse games with these retailers? Do you want to bow down to somebody other than God and give your soul to them? Okay. I'll change my greens. Oh, okay. I don't want to change my greens. I, 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 I wanted to keep it 100% natural. Well, you got to do it. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll change it. I'll put this one ingredient and it's still natural, right? Okay. You know, you got to play these games. So I'm not playing any games. I'm playing my own games and I'm playing, I'm playing the games based off of the direction that the Holy Spirit takes me in. So, and I'm very serious about that. So you have to make a decision whether or not you want to go retail or whether you want to go online. I have friends who are, who've been in retail and who are now trying to transition over to online. That is very hard. 
That is difficult because the things that your, your mind has been wired to do for retail sales is not the same thing that needs to occur in online sales. You now have to be the salesperson. You now need to understand social media. You should have already had a social media following before you tried to switch over to from retail over to online. Now you're starting from zero where companies like mine have been around for over a decade. And now you got between me and that new person online, now you got 10,000 other companies in between that. So it's hard to do that because, because every single year over those courses of 10 years of me being online, of Gardner's Garden being online, how much money have I spent in order to acquire all these customers? Millions. Millions of dollars have gone into acquiring all these customers, my customer base. So for, for a person to just jump into this and to think that, okay, well, I got a company built out. I've been selling in, in, in certain stores and stuff like that. And my budget per day is, I only can afford, because I don't have a lot of money from these retail sales, so my budget per day is $20. Who are you competing with for $20? You can't compete $20 now because you wasted your time sending people over there. When your entire career, you should have just been sending them to your website. So that's just food for thought and looking at it from a reverse engineering standpoint and taking hindsight is 2020. You're hearing it now so that you can make your decision whether or not you want to be that online retailer where everything is on your shoulders where from, from, from start to finish or whether you have a 3PL in the middle, whether you have a co-packer. Co-packers and 3PLs, I mean, 3PLs are third-party logistics companies who where you, you have this body butter that comes in. Now I send it to the 3PL. That 3PL now, when an order comes in, they, they ship it for you. But that's, that's a waste of money. If you only have 50 orders, why are, you sending, why are you sending these products to somebody to ship for you when you only have 50 orders? I, used to, I bought an expedition just to take stuff to an uh, expedition long, an extended one, extended wheelbase. And I used to, those big Rubbermaid plastic bins, until I couldn't carry this stuff out of my basement anymore, I would shove it in, shove it in. One, two, three, four. And then Jordan, help me, five, put it on top, six, seven, eight. And I was busting out of the seams until I started needing ordering barrels of, of, of witch hazel, of aloe vera. That's when I knew, okay, I'm past my basement. Um, but my point, my point of that was, is that 3PLs aren't needed until you are shipping, like all, all of a sudden you're shipping like 100,000 products, orders not products, 100,000 orders like in a week or in a month. But if you're only shipping 1,000 in a week, you got to figure that out. You can't hand that over to a 3PL. You can't think that you can sit back right now and, and think that, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create this money machine where my hands are off and I get my, my co-packer to make something make this shea butter. They just charged me $8 for when it shouldn't have cost $8. And then now I'm going to send it over. I'm going to pay for shipping, send it over to my 3PL, which costs money for shipping. And then I'm going to have to pay shipping for them to send it out. Plus I'm going to have to pay, pay money for them to hold it for me for inventory. Plus I'm going to have to pay for every time they touch one of my products to put it inside of the, inside of the shipping thing. So now I have to sell my product at $40 or $50. Who's buying this shea butter for $50? You just outpriced yourself because you aren't willing, the person isn't willing to put in the work to develop their own products, to understand the development of a product from start to finish. And you think you can just go out there and just source a product and think that you can make a profit off of it. There goes all your profit. That $8 that you're spending on this one little product, that's how much you should be selling it for. Unless you know how to sell luxury goods. If some people want to start a luxury brand, right? Are you a luxury person? Do you know, do you know that type of lifestyle? Do you know how to talk? You can't, like, 
you, you might be good at, can you go from selling, could you be a Ford person? Nothing wrong with that. Ford, Han, I have a Ford. Can you, can you be a Ford person and then all of a sudden next day start selling Lamborghinis to a Lamborghini type of customer? Maybe you can. <laughs> Maybe you have the charisma. But do you have the knowledge of how these people think and how these people work? So I go where I am at. I am middle class, so I'm selling to who I know, who I can talk to. And sure, you may have some upper class people, make sure you may have some lower class. But at the end of the day, my goal, my target are people like me. I sell to people like me because that's who I can relate to. All right. So don't think that you can try and start a luxury brand selling something for $80. Maybe you can because it, it actually does get rid of wrinkles and all this other stuff. I'm not going to downplay what your product claims that it can do. However, can your customer base, the people who will listen to you, will they pay $80 for it? It's all about the people who are listening to you and how you present yourself to those people. Okay. Because your product it can't be worth $80. But who's buying it? Who has $80 nowadays? So you gotta make the products. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta package them. You gotta ship them. You can't, you can't depend on outside people to do this work for you. Whoo! I forgot what the title of this uh, video was. So I'm just gonna end it there. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Contact at garnersgarden.com.